Hi everyone, this is Fabi and in today's video we'll be talking purely about the hardware side of embedded systems, namely PCBs, how you design them and how you can order them. Although it's not the first step when learning about embedded systems, designing your own PCB gives you unlimited flexibility in achieving what you want with it. You can choose the size and shape you want, what kind of chips you want to have on it, how many buttons, how many LEDs, you can even have your own signature on the board. If you're new to the channel, this video is part of an educational series I'm doing called Embedded Systems Explained and the aim of this series is to teach you embedded systems in a simple to understand manner and with examples so that you know where these concepts are being used in the real world. So if you want to learn more, make sure to watch those other videos as well. I will put a link to the playlist in the pinned comment. Throughout the video, I will refer to the very first PCB I worked on, which I designed for a university project and I ordered back then from today's sponsor, PCBWay. So let's hear a quick message from them. Special thanks to PCBWay, which is a one-stop shop for all your PCB prototyping, 3D printing and CNC machining needs. Click the link in the description to buy 5 PCBs with 2-4 to four day shipping for under $30. If you have an idea for a new product or already have everything developed, PCBWay offers complete manufacturing services from producing PCBs, buying the necessary parts, assembling the PCBs, CNC machining, 3D printing, even injection molding, all the way to final assembly. No matter how complex your project is, PCB way has got you covered. Okay, so there are four main steps to creating your PCB. The first one is to either create or import the parts you will be using. Secondly, you need to design your schematic. Thirdly, you will need to work on the layout itself. And last but not least, you will need to generate the files which are necessary for production. PCB designing software such as Altium, Orcad, KiCad, Eagle or many others will allow you to do all these steps in one software. Let's now go into detail about each of these steps. First of all, you need to create your parts for the schematic. So a part is how you represent a component which you want on your PCB in the design software. It's actually the connection between the schematic symbol and the layout footprint. A schematic symbol is the electrical representation of the component you will be using. Basically, if it's a passive component or an active one, like a transistor or a diode, it's going to be the standard symbol for it. If it is a chip, it will most likely be a rectangle with the correct number of pins on the sides. The footprint, on the other hand, is the mechanical representation of your component, meaning its real size, whether it's through hole or surface mounted, pin pitch, the copper pad size, and a bunch of other things. A correct footprint ensures that you will be able to solder your component on the PCB. Most manufacturers use standard packages though, and you can find the footprint for these online most of the time. It's also important to note that manufacturers include footprint land patterns into their data sheets, which give you all the information you need to create correct footprints. Once you've got your parts sorted, you can move on to designing your schematic. At its core, the schematic is a list of interconnections called nets, which are the connections between your components. These connections are what allow you to supply your microcontroller with power or connect that button, for example, to your microcontroller. This is basically how you ensure that the functionality you need out of your board is implemented. Even though nowadays all PCB design software have a graphical user interface where you create a schematic, where you basically drag components around on a virtual sheet of paper, you drag between pins to create connections, at its core, the output of the schematic is still a list of interconnections, which is called a net list, and we will need this for the next step. While you're at it, you should also export the bill of materials, which is an Excel file with all of the components on your board. You can use this in order to order the components you will need for populating your board later on. At this point, you can also simulate your schematic to see if it works the way you expect it to. Although most PCB design software allow you to simulate circuits, it gets a bit more complicated if you want to simulate your microcontroller running the code as well, though this is not impossible. In order to simulate a circuit, you need models for all your components describing their electrical behavior. If your software allows for simulation, most of the time it will also have its own models. If not, you can search online for these. The third step is to work on our layout, which is the actual PCB. 
First, we need to import the netlist from the schematic. This will basically carry over all of the components we are using and the connections between them. Secondly, it's important to take a look at what manufacturing capabilities your PCB manufacturer has and input these into your design software. This way, after designing your PCB, you can check if you satisfy all of the constraints that you've entered. Just as an example, in our case, PCBWay can manufacture PCBs with a trace width all the way down to 0.1 mm or 4 mm. By default, most design software will set you up with a two-layer board, meaning that you can route your electrical traces on both the top and the bottom layer. If you run out of space while routing or need extra shielding, you can go for a four-layer stack up or you can choose even more layers. After this, you have to place all of your components on the board and route all of the connections you defined in the schematic. You have to pay attention to not route two traces over each other as this will create a short circuit and you can use something called a via if you want to switch a trace from the top layer to let's say the bottom layer. The via basically creates an electrical connection between two layers through a hole which is metalized. Creating a good layout will usually take a lot of time because there are a lot of considerations to be made from things like where you place your components which humans interact with such as switches, connectors or buttons all the way through things like how you deal with heat dissipation on the board and many other things in between. The final step is to generate the Gerber files which you will need to send to your PCB manufacturer, in our case PCBWay. Gerber files basically describe your PCB layers such as the copper layers, the solder mask layers, the paste mask layers, the drill layers or the documentation layers. You can think of them as vectorized images of each of your layers. By uploading these Gerber files onto the PCBWay online tool, you can preview your board and customize things such as copper thickness, solder mask color or many others. Alright, this was quite a lot of information condensed into one video. I tried to trim it down to the essentials though to give you an idea of what the steps are to creating your own PCB. There's obviously more to it though, so leave a comment down below and tell me what you'd like to hear more about. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. My stats tell me that a lot of you guys watching still aren't subscribed yet, so why not do it now? Anyways, I'll catch up with you in the next video, stay tuned.